To earn our way in the world, most of us need a job. And while the vast majority of people take on roles that are completely safe, there are those that literally put their lives on the line every single day in order to get a paycheck. Let's take a look at the top 15 most dangerous jobs in the world. Number 15. Small Aircraft Pilots Traveling by large commercial aircraft is one of the safest means of getting from place to place that there is. But this record isn't exactly the same when you take into account the thousands of flights made in small aircraft each day. Not only do pilots of all planes put their bodies through greater pressures than the rest of us with irregular schedules and sleep patterns, but those that fly crop dusters, connect remote regions around the world, or conduct transoceanic flights in small aircraft have a surprisingly high chance of dying while at work. In an average year, for example, at least three pilots will die while flying a small aircraft across the Atlantic, which is almost one of the most frightening routes because they aren't large enough to fly over any storms that develop, and similar risks are involved when connecting remote regions that barely have permanent landing strips. As a result of crashes or mechanical failure, this all combines to give the industry a fatal injury rate of 58.9 per 100,000 workers each year, which is significantly higher than you might expect for someone working in such a highly trained and seemingly safe industry. Number 14. Loggers whether it's to clear large areas of forest for construction work or to help manage an ecosystem from being overrun by huge trees to the detriment of other life, tree fellers are often required in both rural and urban environments. Often said to be the most dangerous profession in the United States, with a fatality rate of more than 30 times that of average workers, there are a number of hazards that someone in the industry will regularly face. The first is that they often work in tricky and hard-to-reach areas, something that increases the chance of injury and makes it far more difficult to react quickly if an accident does happen. The work is also usually done where it's impossible to take large machinery, so the tools of choice are chainsaws, and there are countless injuries each year that are caused by those. The final danger, of course, is the sheer size of trees and how complex it can sometimes be to control them and their bulky branches as they fall. Being struck by trees or falling from heights is the main cause of injuries to tree felling, and the number of deaths, which is estimated to be 97.6 per 100,000 workers, is a figure that significantly increases during periods of particularly bad weather. Number 13. Underground Mining Machine Operators Mining has been happening for many thousands of years and allows us to extract valuable materials from beneath the surface of the Earth. Historically, it was an incredibly dangerous job because of the risk that tunnels may collapse or the release of toxic fumes. And while safety procedures have certainly improved in recent decades, technology has also added extra complexities to be wary of. Due to the nature of the work, it normally takes place in tight, cramped conditions. And when there's an emergency, it can be difficult to evacuate everyone quickly. Explosions are the biggest danger, as they can happen with very little warning because of a sudden buildup of gases and because of the way that shock waves travel along the path of least resistance, which is the tunnels that the workers are in. The heavy machinery that's used in mines is also a cause of a number of accidents, and being struck or crushed by a giant shovel or bulldozer is a painful and surprisingly common occurrence. With a death rate of 26.9 per 100,000 workers, it's definitely not the type of job that most people are suited to. Number 12. Farmers With the world's population continuing to expand rapidly, farmers are arguably more important than ever to ensure that enough food is produced to support everyone. This drive to increase volume, though, along with a number of structural issues in the industry, means that it's far more dangerous being a farmer than you'd initially expect, with a casualty rate of approximately 20.9 per 100,000 workers. Farms can no longer be profitable by doing everything by hand, so farmers rely on huge, heavy machinery to do virtually every job. As it's a fairly solitary job, a worker will often be alone in a field, and if there's an accident, it'll often be a long time before anyone else can even raise the alarm, let alone how long it would take to be able to treat the injury. This risk is further increased by the fact that the average age of farmers is increasing, both because of who can afford to own a farm and because the work isn't appealing to younger people, and over 65s are far more likely to have accidents with machinery. 
There are plenty of other risks around a farm too, such as rapidly changing weather and, depending on the type of farm, livestock. In fact, in the UK, coming into contact with cattle accounted for 18% of workplace deaths in farming between 2015 and 2020. Number 11. First Response Rescuers Thousands of people work every day to assist others who have had accidents or found themselves in tricky situations. But no matter how many procedures are put in place to ensure the safety of the first response rescuers, there's no avoiding the fact that they may be required to go into dangerous situations. Tragically, in some disasters, there can be more rescuer fatalities than originally victims, and anyone involved in working in these roles is acutely aware of the risks they face, and still do it anyway. Recently, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration trawled through years' worth of data and found that rescuers actually accounted for around 60% of all confined space fatalities. And in those types of incidents where multiple deaths occurred, the majority of the victims were the rescuers. Firefighting, of course, is an extremely dangerous emergency response role, with around 2.3 fatalities per 100,000 fires. And EMT workers also have a very high injury and fatality rate, not just because they often work in dangerous situations, but because of an increasing trend in them being attacked by passers-by. Number 10. Construction Supervisors Construction sites are, unsurprisingly, potentially dangerous places for a range of different reasons. There's heavy machinery, such as cement mixers and cranes, there's extremely heavy materials, and workers can potentially be required to carry out their roles when at a considerable height, all of which gives rise to the risk of fall or crush injuries, among many more. What's less expected, though, is that the people most at risk at places like these aren't actually the construction workers themselves, but their supervisors. This seems strange at first, considering they aren't exposed to the risks as much, but this does make a lot of sense. With a fatality rate of 21 deaths per 100,000 workers, this statistic is because the supervisors tend to move around the sites and are at risk from a range of different factors, as opposed to the one or two that each individual worker needs to be careful of. Further, supervisors are more than likely to overlook safety procedures if they're checking in on progress instead of doing the actual work so they're far more likely to fall from heights or be crushed under heavy loads. Number 9. Roofers It's believed that as much as a third of all fall fatalities in the United States happen when people fall from the roof of a house or an apartment. So if your job is to build or repair roofs, you're immediately working in a potential danger zone. Roofers spend much of their working day climbing ladders and walking over places that are steeply angled, and just one wrong move can spell disaster. Of course, there are ways to mitigate these risks, such as using safety harnesses. And while it's the law in most places that measures must be taken to improve safety, these rules aren't always adhered to. The death rate in the roofing industry is about 51.5 per 100,000 workers, most of which are caused by falls. There are other risks to be aware of, too, that can lead to problems, and these include health complications caused by some of the materials and chemicals that are used, the unexpected presence of animals beneath tiles or in chimneys, and unpredictable weather that can soon turn a seemingly safe roof into a slippery hazard that requires steady grip and balance to safely traverse. Number 8. Slaughterhouse Workers with such huge quantities of food being needed to keep up with demand, one of the most gruesome and dangerous types of facility that's used to support the wider farming industry is an abattoir. Rather than, as used to be the case, slaughtering and processing animals at the farm, they're instead usually sent somewhere that's an industrial-sized processing facility that deals with killing the animals, as well as cutting up the carcasses and preparing the meat for sale. In the U.S. alone, 9.5 billion animals are slaughtered each year, and the majority of these animals pass through just one of 800 federally inspected slaughterhouses. The employees at the facilities have extraordinarily high workloads with dangerous machinery, and this creates the perfect environment for workplace injuries. The knocker, for example, which is the employee responsible for using a bolt gun to either kill or incapacitate a cow, will process 2,500 animals per day, or one every 12 seconds. Accidents are, as a result, commonplace and seen as just part of the job. In 2015, reports show that 5.4% of all slaughterhouse workers were injured, and in that year alone, some of the incidents were so severe that 270 of them resulted in the amputation of a body part. 
Even avoiding the one-off dangerous incidents doesn't mean workers have it easy, though. High proportions of employees in the industry have nerve conditions, are at a much higher risk of bacterial infections, and report a much higher incidence of mental health issues, too. Number 7. Landscapers it may seem like an enjoyable job. You get to work outside in nature and create stunning outdoor spaces. But working in landscaping is actually one of the most dangerous careers you could pursue with a fatality rate of 20.2 per 100,000, which is five times that of the average. The reason for this risk of death and similar risk of injury is simply because of the environment they work in and the number of hazards they can encounter. First, the job requires working on uneven terrain and often with powerful tools. A chainsaw or drill could easily cause an injury that could even require the amputation of a limb, and there's further risk from the vibrations they send through the body and the noise. There's also the risk of animals, from insects that can bite and sting and carry diseases, to the presence of chemicals that have been used to try to reduce their prevalence. Unmarked buried electrical cables are a particular danger that can cause serious injury if drilled into, and the repetitive motions involved with most tools and the physical exertion required can further cause various injuries. Rather than being an easy career, this is one for the physically fit and strong, and also those who are intelligent and on alert, so they can do a good job while being safe at the same time. Number 6. Refuse Workers one of the industries that's absolutely crucial to the rest of us is waste collection. The average American, for example, produces around 4.4 pounds, or about 2 kilos of trash, per day. And if this wasn't taken away and processed, it would all start to build up quickly and turn our towns and cities into garbage dumps. Across the country, there are 120,000 waste workers, and it's a highly competitive industry, where in some cities only 1% of applicants are successful. But there's a downside. It's one of the top five most dangerous jobs of all, with a fatal injury rate of 44.3 per 100,000 workers, a figure that's higher than for police. The reason for this is simply because workers never know for certain what they're picking up in bags and bins. And not only do they often have to lift heavy loads, which can cause injuries, but potentially dangerous ones that can poison them or give them illness. The main risk they face, though, is the result of the types of machines they use and the way that they have to collect the trash from the streets. Workers occasionally get trapped within the mechanisms of the garbage truck, which can drag them inside if no one's able to react in time. But the biggest danger is from the other drivers. The trucks have to stop in the street in the middle of traffic routes, and if other cars aren't cautious enough, they'll collide with a worker who's walking around the truck. Number 5. Fishers Depending on the region where you work, the professional fishing industry can be one of the most dangerous on Earth. Many thousands of workers are subjected to the whims of the weather and the ocean each year to provide one of the major food sources, but with that comes huge risks. The Alaskan fishing industry, for example, provides 95% of the salmon supply in the United States and is hugely important to the state's economy, making up almost 50% of all its private sector employment. It's tough work, and involves hauling up huge nets or cages that weigh several hundred pounds. And when the weather's being less than helpful, this can be far more energy intensive. The geographical location around Alaska, along with the freezing cold waters, mean that any injuries or accidents are multiplied in their severity. It meant that in 2008, 128 per 100,000 fishing workers died figure that was 26 times higher than the national average and made up a third of all occupational deaths in Alaska that year. Across the entire industry throughout the country, the fatality rate is slightly lower at 77.4 per 100,000 workers, with the most common causes being drowning, collisions, falling on slippery decks, malfunctioning equipment, and being struck by unexpected waves. Number 4. Steel Workers Steel is one of the most important materials in the construction industry and provides a strong foundation that structures can be built around. Those that work with steel and iron are in an extremely dangerous industry, however, because the latest statistics show there's a fatality rate of 23.6 per 100,000 workers. There are dangers in every stage of the production and construction process. From the start, there are chemicals and airborne toxins that are present in steel mills that, if not handled correctly, can lead to burns, blindness, and lung damage. 
then there are the harsh noises at mills and construction sites that can contribute to hearing loss, and the vibrations from the power tools that can cause nerve damage and chronic pain. It's the heavy machinery and the height at which steel construction workers perform their roles that pose the greatest risks, though. No matter how careful someone is, there's always the chance they may be struck by a vehicle or a machine, and these dangers get worse when you take into account deteriorating equipment, cutting corners to save time, failing safety mechanisms, and operator error. The number one risk of death to steelworkers comes from slips, trips, and falls. Particularly in environments where walkways are obstructed, the floor is uneven, and when it's slippery after rain, it's very easy to lose your footing and have very little chance of stopping yourself from falling a great distance. Despite these dangers, the appeal of this as a career isn't falling, and the industry is projected to continue growing for at least the next decade. Safety procedures have been shown to successfully reduce the number of serious incidents, but due to the nature of the work, it'll never be a role that's risk-free. Number 3. Truck Drivers Industry across the globe rely on truck drivers. Typically working grueling hours and spending extended periods away from home, they keep goods and supplies moving from warehouses and ports to where they're needed, and without them, life as we know it would soon grind to a halt. Surprisingly, for a career that we're all so reliant upon, truck drivers around the world have found themselves facing tougher working conditions, with far fewer facilities available to them, and some places even preventing them from resting. Our expectation for packages to arrive quicker than ever before further increases the pressure on these drivers, and the result is increasingly weary workers in control of huge vehicles, and it's no surprise that things occasionally end in tragedy. Every time a truck driver starts work, they're putting their lives at risk. In the United States, driver fatalities account for the largest number of deaths of any group of workers, with an average of 918 per year, and this equates to a figure of 26 deaths per 100,000 drivers. Of course, the main cause of these are road traffic accidents, because if you're behind the wheel of a multi-ton truck that's involved in an accident, your chances of being severely injured increase substantially. And it's not just when they're traveling that dangers are present, though. Drivers are occasionally struck by other vehicles as they walk alongside their trucks, suffer injuries as they help to unload their cargo that may have shifted during transit, and particularly if they've been transporting highly valuable items. They're also targeted by criminals who have very little regard for safety when they're focused on a massive payday. A lot of these dangers are the reason why drivers in many countries have resorted to protesting and striking. Not necessarily because they feel the risks can be reduced, but because they feel they deserve the respect of the rest of society because of the important roles that they play. Number 2. Sulfur Mining In East Java, Indonesia, there's one of the most stunning natural formations you'll find anywhere on Earth. The Ijen Volcano Complex has been active for many thousands of years. And in this volcano itself, there's a 0.62 mile or 1 kilometer wide acidic crater lake that's becoming world famous not just because of its stunning appearance, but because when night falls, the area is lit up by blue fire and lava. The reason why it takes on this incredible color is because of all the minerals that are present, and this has led to an opportunity. There's an active vent near the edge of the lake, and the gases are sent through a series of ceramic pipes that cause them to cool and release molten sulfur that turns yellow as it solidifies. The sulfur is useful to a number of different industries, and at the volcano, there are 200 miners who are responsible for climbing up to the lake each morning, chipping away at huge chunks of sulfur, and then carrying it back down to be processed. They will carry up to 198 pounds or 90 kilograms of material from the deposits up to the volcano rim, which is a 980 foot or 300 meter climb, and then 1.9 miles or 3 kilometers down the mountain for it to be weighed. Most of the miners will do this twice a day, and while they can make competitive salaries for the region, around $13 per day, there are huge risks involved. Occasionally, they may lose their footing and either seriously injure themselves or even fall into the acidic lake. And the fact that very few workers are able to provide safety equipment for themselves means that they breathe in huge volumes of noxious gas. It's quite common as a result for workers to develop breathing conditions and cancers that are directly linked to their exposure to the environment. And anyone that's done the job for longer than a year has a significantly lower life expectancy. Number 1. Landmine Removal 
Landmines are the most indiscriminate and cruel weapons of war. Rather than being used to specifically target the enemy, they're triggered by anyone who's unfortunate enough to tread on one. And while this may arguably be justified in a time of war to protect certain areas, the biggest problem is that they remain active long after the fighting has ended. One of the largest minefields in the world is known as K5, and it runs almost the entire length of the border between Thailand and Cambodia. Frighteningly, it's believed to contain as many as 2 million landmines, which is a legacy of fighting in the 60s and 70s, and now it's the job of the international organizations to try to clear them to reduce the risk of local farmers falling victim to them. No matter how well trained someone is in finding and deactivating them, the range of different devices that were buried there, as well as their age, which means they act unpredictably, means that it's an incredibly dangerous job. Fatalities are, thankfully, rare, but not unheard of. But injuries, such as shrapnel wounds and the loss of hands, feet, or limbs, are quite common. Watch our scary playlist for more top 15 videos about the most scary subjects. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best videos.